Wow, has it been three months already? That's crazy. Does it happen to any of you too where you blink and a quarter of a year goes by? Here's an update on my no by year. Stay tuned. So three months ago, I started my YouTube channel and the whole reason for me starting this YouTube channel was I was inspired. I was inspired by Shell Bizzle and I will link her down below. I was inspired by Hannah Louise Poston, I will link her down below. And I wanted to be part of the movement that is happening to help the world. I embarked on a no buy year, March 1st. And three months went by in a blink of an eye. They say as you get older that your life goes faster, kind of like a roll of toilet paper, and the closer you get to the core, the faster it goes. And I'm finding that with my life. Are any of you finding that with your life? So I embarked on this no buy year for two reasons. One, I wanted to put my green in green. I want to use my money to affect a change on the world. And two, I want to reduce my impact on the environment. If you haven't heard about the plastic problem that we have, you've been living under a rock, you should take a look. It's everywhere, everyone is posting about it, you should check it out. And there are things that each person can do to change the world, to change the world even in a small way. Am I perfect in my no plastic and my no by year? No, but I am better than I was three months ago. So the big question is, have I failed? Have I failed in three months? Have I purchased something that I shouldn't have purchased? I posted a video a while ago and I've listened to you guys and I've listened to your comments and the scales have been weighed and it looks like the majority view is that the screen behind me broke my no buy rules. Is this a failure? I don't like that word failure at all. There's a meme out there that says, Thomas Edison says that it took him 2,000 tries to make a light bulb. He didn't fail 1,999 times, he found 1,999 ways not to make a light bulb. And that's how I'm looking at my screen behind me. If you want the backstory on the screen, please check out the video that I have about it. I will link it above. I actually don't know which side it's gonna pop out on. I think it depends on which way I have my phone flipped. So I'm just going to point straight up and you will see something come from one side or the other. I have never gotten it right. I have never successfully pointed to the correct side of wherever that's going to pop out. So check that out. This screen I purchased on March 14th. So 14 days into my no buy, I broke my rules. The, the majority view is that buying this screen broke my rules. The minority view is that it did not. And that's how ha everything happens in law, right? There's a majority view and a minority view. There's no real wrong answer or right answer. It's you have a majority view and a minority view. And the majority view is that this broke my no by year. So 14 days in, I broke my no by year. What's happened since then? I haven't purchased anything that I shouldn't have with my rules. So tell them quick, tell them often because memory is fragile. I have six categories of things that I am not purchasing. I am not purchasing housewares, cleaning supplies, makeup, hair care, skin care, and I can't remember the last one. This happens every time. And that sixth category that I can't remember, I will type it in here. I'm having a senior moment. This happens. So what has been my biggest struggle over the past three months? Hmm. It's not been online shopping. Online shopping has been easy to curtail and I wasn't a big shopper before. I was a, a moderate shopper. We bring a lot of different things into the house, but we actually use them. We have, my, when I say we, my husband and I, we've been focused more on consumables and bringing into the house things that we need. I recently had exper an experience a couple of weeks ago. We went to the Home Depot and I don't get out of the house much between work because I am blessed and able to run my business from home and school, I lived my life in front of a computer or in looking at a book and I don't, I haven't left the house much. And so we left the house and went to the Home Depot to purchase some plants for the backyard. And I have a video on that that should be coming up soon. I'm not real thrilled with the video, so I've been slow to post it, but I we purchased some plants. And at the Home Depot, I had the hardest time, 
hardest time with my no by year. There I was like a squirrel. Everything I looked at, there were indoor plants, which I don't need. There were hummingbird feeders. There were patio supplies. There were all sorts of things that I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I actually picked them up and had to look at it and then put it back on the shelf and tell myself I'm on a no by year. And I did this probably a dozen times while I was at the store. And something else I struggled with at the Home Depot were knobs for my vanity. So my vanity is a desk that I purchased from Craigslist a long time ago, last year sometime, early last year, way before my no by year, from a lady in a neighboring town who purchases furniture, furniture and refurbishes it. And she has these. These are the knobs that are on my desk, my vanity. And they are cute, but they're not as glamorous as I want. I would like a sparkling knob, bring on the sparkle. This is my beauty space, I want it to shine. And when we were at the Home Depot, they had crystal knobs, they had copper knobs, and I was like, ooh, and I was totally brought into the sparkle. And I picked out six knobs, and then told myself, you are on a no buy year, and I actually put them back. So I was surprised to find that the Home Depot was the hardest part of my no buy year. Staying off online things hasn't been a problem. That's been fairly easy for me. There was one time I built, um, I built a ColourPop Build Your Own palette because they were 50% off. I went in and built one and put it into my cart and then didn't purchase it. But otherwise I've been able to stay off online shopping very easily and it's because I have so much. I have, well, not so much, I should be careful with that. It's because I have enough. I definitely have enough of everything that I need, quote unquote, because I don't really need any of this, right? We can all live, breathe, and exist without any beauty, skincare, or hair care products. I have enough, they all do the jobs that I want to be done in my life. And so I'm just using what I have. I'm on the road to being practically minimalist. I don't think I will ever reach the leafy level of minimalism. If you haven't met Leafy, I will link her video and channel down below. She's amazing and her channel has blown up. She is she is a hardcore minimalist. I will never reach that, but I'm looking to be practically minimalist. And why is this? We lost our patriarch of our family. My father-in-law passed away a few years ago and he grew up in the depression era. He lived on grease, grease sandwiches like they had nothing. And from that came the feeling of we must save everything and we must keep everything and we must extract use out of everything that we have. And when he passed away, he left a lot, a lot of stuff to be dealt with. And it was very hard and taxing on our family, very hard and taxing on my mother-in-law and my husband and I who were part of this situation. And we were thinking to ourselves, we don't have children. What's going to happen if we both pass away together? All we're gonna do is burden a loved one or a friend with our stuff. And so we've been working to declutter, minimize, repurpose, reuse, and gift things that we have in our life because we were part of the consumerism train, reduce what we have so that we don't leave a burden on our family and friends when we pass because this, this was incredibly hard. There was so much, he had so much. He had three sets of basically every tool. He was a building engineer and we ended up donating a lot of his stuff. Now, is that great? Can we help people, friends, family? Uh, build their own businesses and fill a hole that they have in their need space for work Yes, and we did as much of that as we could but there was still a lot nuts and bolts and other little hardware gadgets and gadgets and widgets and just tins and tins and tins of stuff and So we ended up giving a lot of that away back to my no by ear. I, I'm a squirrel, so I think in every video I ever post, we're gonna have a drinking game. And if I go down a rabbit hole or go off on a tangent, take a drink of whatever you're drinking. If you're drinking water, you will be well hydrated. If you are drinking coffee, you will have a heck of a buzz. The same goes for a cocktail. If you're drinking a cocktail, both coffee and cocktails will give you a heck of a buzz. So 
So take a drink because I just went down a rabbit hole. Let's go back to this failure talk. Does this mean that I failed? I don't think so. And leave in the comments down below what you think and how you think about the word failure and what thoughts are invoked when you see somebody not perform 100% under rules. I don't look at this as a failure. I look at it as an opportunity for learning and to not get pulled in again into purchasing something else that would violate my no by year rules. I am grateful to have the screen behind me. If you watch the video, you'll know that it has my, my channel saying right here in a subliminal message, be the change that you wanna see in the world by Gandhi. And I thrifted this. A neighbor of mine was moving away. He had it posted on Facebook. I may have saved it from a landfill because if it didn't sell, he was ready, he had to go. He was packed up and ready to get out of the house. It may have ended up in a landfill. Maybe it had been donated, but either way, it has been repurposed, lovingly cared for, and now become a part of my YouTube channel. Under my no buy rules, I'm allowed to buy replacements for things that I use up, and so I have to fully use up a category of things. So say for instance, I completely use up my setting powder. Then I'm allowed to purchase another setting powder, but I have a restriction on how I purchase it. Either I have to buy it secondhand so that I don't create a demand for environmentally unfriendly packaging, or create a demand for non-ethically sourced goods, or create a demand for supply chains that don't pay everyone in the chain a fair wage. That's that's the crux of my no buy year. This is why I'm doing it, because I want to be the change that I want to see. And I want to see the world change and grow and become conscious and aware that everything that we do in our little life impacts everything else. And that's 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 an overwhelming feeling once your eyes are open to that. It's like, wow, I purchased this setting powder I don't know. I don't know the supply chain of Oh, I know it's a very nice product and I really like the product. I know that the packaging is plastic and this packaging will be on this earth forever. This will take more than the world has been around, more time than the world has been around to degrade. Now this packaging itself doesn't say, it doesn't have a little recycling symbol on it trash which means it'll live in a landfill probably get swept into a river down into the ocean and plug it a whale's blowhole that's what I'm thinking of and I want to stop that I want to not be part of the consumerism chain that adds to the plastic island in the ocean and if you guys haven't seen that check it out just just google plastic floating plastic island and you will see many, many, many images of it. So this this is why I'm doing my no by year. So my replacement restriction has opened my eyes to quite a challenge. So in order to get companies to continue producing a product that you love, you have to invest, you have to buy it. If you're not buying it, they're not gonna make it. I wanna put my green in green. I wanna drive, I wanna fuel the green technology space with my money and I want to purchase things from companies that are focused on their impact in the environment. And one one of the products that I, I'm going to struggle with the most is one of the bits of my holy grail hair care. And that is this. Wow dream coat. This stuff saved my hair. I absolutely love this product and I'm about to pan it. It feels like maybe the level is down to here. Absolutely love this product. This packaging is a recycle of two. I don't know about their supply chain. I don't know if everyone's fairly compensated in their supply chain. So in order to purchase this product, I'm going to have to find it secondhand. Now this creates a paradox. And there are so many paradoxes that happen when you're on a no-buy year. And if you haven't met Prachi, I'm going to link her video above or below uh, if I can, because they limit the cards to five. But, I'm, but I will link Prachi's video above or below. She beautifully, beautifully hit the nail on the head about a paradox that happens when you're on a no-buy year. I'm highlighting another one. 
So for my restrictions that I have to replace things secondhand, that doesn't mean used, it just means uh, I am purchasing them from someone who already has items in their bloated categories and I'm not creating a demand for a product. How do I ensure that this product is still made? How do I do that? Because I, this is my hair care holy grail, one of them. I have a couple of them and I'll do a separate video on my holy grail hair care products. This, this stuff, this stuff saved my hair, saved it. If you see the shine, if you see that it's laying nice, it stopped the breakage, all these short pieces. I didn't have layers cut into my hair. This was breakage and damage from coloring and blow drying and heating and I was blonde many years ago and just fried the heck out of it. And this, this has stopped the breakage. Love this product. If I'm not creating a demand for this product, are they still gonna make it? And if they stop making it, while I won't actually die, I really feel like I'll die. I'll die. This stuff, this stuff is amazing. So what do I do? When I go to replace this, I do have to find a second hand so that I don't break my, my no buy rules. And I hope that I can find someone that's selling it secondhand, not a beauty supplier, not someone that is purchasing from the company to then resell it. I want to find someone who's buying it from someone who's not actually creating a demand for the product. That means that I'm going to end up hurting this company and I'm not going to be encouraging them to make more when this product is freaking amazing. So I think I will do two things. During my no buy year, which is already a quarter over, I can't believe it, I blinked and it's a quarter over, I will find this second hand. And then I'm going to reach out to the company and ask them if they could offer this in different packaging. If they could offer it maybe in glass packaging, and yes, it's going to cost more money. Yes, I'm aware that it will impact my budget more, but that price for me is worth the savings to the environment. So this is a paradox, talk to me about that. And here's another drinking moment because I didn't finish my thoughts on failures and opportunities for improvement. So with my no buy year, I broke my rules 14 days in with the screen behind me. Does that mean that it's over, game over, life over? Absolutely not. It showed me how not to use my no buy rules. I am grateful that I have this but it, it taught me something. It taught me I am still driven by consumerism and by having all the pretty things. I think that this is beautiful and that's going to be a challenge in my practic Practically Minimalist series that I will be starting soon. I'm gonna go through my house, clean out things, organize things, declutter things, and then talk to you about what I'm doing with those decluttered items. And I actually have a table over here that is the bane of my existence right now. It's covered in items that I want to remove from my space, but I want to do it in the right way. And I don't know if donating them is the right way because a lot of donations end up in the landfill. And since day 14, I haven't broken the rules. I have stayed well within my rules. I have replaced things with secondhand items or found a company that really cares about the environment, the supply chain, making sure everybody is paid fairly, that their items can be easily recycled, easily reused, and won't end up as part of the floating plastic island that, and actually there's multiples of them out in the ocean. Now since I highlighted an opportunity for improvement, I want to highlight an absolute win. And stationary is not a specific category in my no by year, but what did I do? Because I want to use what I have and I want to repurpose what I have and I don't want to drive consumerism for products that hurt the environment. Tell them quick, tell them often, memory is fragile. I had a super big year this year just because just maybe two weeks ago, I graduated law school and I celebrated a milestone birthday within days of each other. And it has been hella celebrations, hella blessings. I have had friends and family send me and give me amazing gifts and they spent time with me. I am a true believer that time is the greatest gift that you can give someone because you're giving someone something that you can never ever ever get back. And they all came down, they all came into the big city that's near my house, which is quite a drive for some of them. I even had friends coming in from Minnesota, which is a, a good day drive for them. And they came into 
to the, my my town and they hung out all weekend and it was just celebration for days. I wanted to send thank you cards. Stationery is not a specific category of things that I have included in my no buy year. I am on a journey into becoming practically minimalist and I want to reuse and repurpose the things that I have. So I had have this whole box that the top popped off of, of stationery. And this box was stuffed, stuffed with cards years ago. And now it is about half stuffed. I had a few thank you cards in here and I used them all up for thanking my friends and family for their amazing gifts, incredibly generous gifts. And then I ran out of thank you cards. And I thought to myself, okay, I have this ginormous box, this stuff. I had Christmas cards from years and years and years and years. So we would buy Christmas cards. We haven't sent out Christmas cards in quite a few years, but there were odds and ends Christmas cards in here. And so what did I do? I repurposed my Christmas cards as thank you cards because literally Christmas came in May for me. It was amazing. All the blessings, all the wonder of Christmas came in May for me. And I repurposed my Christmas cards as thank you cards. Is it a bit weird? Yes. Is it thinking outside the box? Absolutely. Are some of my friends going to get it and get a kick out of it? Absolutely. I can't wait to start receiving the text messages. Are some of them not going to get it? Maybe. That's, that's a risk, but I took that risk. So let me know in the comments below. Was this a stroke of genius or was this an action of a madwoman? Maybe a little from column A, maybe a little from column B, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. So please let me know in the comments below. I plan on doing updates a little more often. This one is so delayed. I seriously, I blinked and three months went by. Work-life balance has been difficult and I've had very little time to sit down, film and edit. So I've just been going live on my channel. I plan on doing an update at least once a month on my no buy year. I hope to do it every two weeks, but it's going to be kind of boring if I come online and say, yep, I didn't buy anything. So I'll have to figure out how to, to make this a little more interesting for my viewers. I thank you all for being here. I thank you all for watching. And as you live the dream this week, I hope that you be the change that you want to see. And rock on.